What's up, guys? This is Corey here with Northern Timber Outfitters. This is my buddy, Sean. What's up, guys? How's it going? Today, we're going to be doing a video kind of just on the, the basic gear that you'll need for duck hunting. Yeah, so for anybody that's looking to get into waterfowl hunting, you're not really sure um, what you need. Um, today, we're just going to be talking about ducks. We will eventually do a video on, on geese, but um, when you get into waterfowl hunting, there's two things you got to decide. Um, one, if you're going to be needing uh, some sort of watercraft to get into um, your spot, or two, if you're just going to walk into, you know, a pond or a small stream or slough or, you know, even into a river spot that might be a little shallow. And uh, there's tons of gear for each one. There's tons of different watercraft. If you're going to be a watercraft person, um, if you're going to walk in, there's a lot of things that you can do to make the walk e in easier. And there's um, a lot of gear out there that'll really make things, you know, helpful for you. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And um, I'll let Corey take it from here. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing that you need to do is find out where you're going to be hunting. Um, scouting goes into that a lot, but we'll get into that later. Um, second thing is whether that spot is accessible by boat. If you have a boat and you're going to be using that boat or if you're going to be walking in like a lot of the public land that we hunt will be walking um, but there are some places that we'll be taking um, just a small john boat out um, so that's that's going to be the biggest thing because that sets up what you what gear you're going to need so um, starting with uh, the boating we'll, I, we'll start with the boat yeah boating's um, probably boating's probably the most popular mm -hmm. one um, I mean, it's kind of 50 50 anymore. There's a lot of places you can walk into and stuff, and some places you might have to. Mm -hmm. And there might be a lot of people who decide to take that route just because it's less expensive in the long run. You're not paying for boats and registration. Yeah, I was going to say, or if you don't have access to a boat, you right. know, you're going to be kind of forced to walk in. So that's one thing. Right. There are also kayaks. You know, right. kayaks well, that's are very popular into, to hunt out of now. That's going to go into, you know, the whole boating thing. Mm -hmm. So, like Corey just said, there, you can hunt out of kayaks. There's a lot of kayaks that are actually kind of geared towards hunting now and there's a lot of accessories that come with that with yep. different blinds and um you know gun holders and all sorts of mm -hmm. stuff that you can get with those kayaks um there's also you know your typical john boat which is probably one of the most popular watercraft Just old school for hunting. nothing yep. better than duck old school out of a flat boat. bottom john boat you know you can pack a bunch of crap in there it doesn't necessarily move through the water well if you're um on, on a like bigger a, body of water yeah bigger body of water or on a river mm -hmm. it just doesn't cut it's not designed for that it's more for pushing through the marsh um so you have your kayaks your john boats um you can use a canoe if you want if you got a canoe laying around the house or like Man, I just want to use this to go out duck hunting. Hey, that works too. Take it. Take it. Because yeah, you don't have to hunt from the boat that you're using. Mm -hmm. That boat can just be used to transport you there. Um, you can put a trolling motor on a kayak if you don't feel like paddling. Or not a kayak. Well, you can put them on a kayak, but you can put them on a canoe. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, there's there's all sorts of kinds of boats that you can use. There's, you know, just little dinghies, um, little V-bottom boats. You know, basically... It's just if you simple. if you have it, use it. Right? Yeah. If you have you know a simple basic boat where you're looking around, you can get one at a good deal, um, and use it for water fountain. Go right ahead. Um, the biggest thing is if you're looking at buying a used one, like off uh, like Marketplace or Craigslist or something, uh, make sure that it comes with the proper paperwork. So that way you don't have to deal with that extra hassle. Um, because when you're hunting on these public lands and wildlife management areas, you're going to need You're going to run into game wardens, and right. they're going to ask, like, hey, is your boat registered? And that's a big thing because that's a big fine if you don't have that done. So Right. Um, you can also make your own boat. So um, back in the day, waterfowlers used to use things called sneak boxes, which were most of the time they were created from wood. Um, there's tons of plans online. Mm -hmm. There's actually whole groups on Facebook um, that are kind of dedicated. dedicated towards that and stuff. Um, there's also a group on Facebook – called DIY waterfowl hunting. Um, if you're a new waterfowl hunter or you're kind of on a budget or, um, you know, you're kind of looking for ways that just to kind of make things easier or improve or you want to try something new, that is a group I recommend getting into because there are some guys on there to do some cool stuff between yep. building their own, I mean, full decked out wooden, like, 16-foot boats. Yep. And they're decked out. They they're them up. Yeah, they're light, like a hard sided, and, yeah, yep. hard sided blind. They're putting a gas motor on them. Yep. So, um, yeah, so you got your John boats, uh, you got your uh, your sneak boxes, which those can be beneficial if you're in a marsh because mm -hmm. you can make them kind of small and you can make them almost like uh, a layout boot, which yeah. 
you know, you're just sitting in there. You're completely concealed. It's kind of just your head and your gun popped out. And, you know, in a marsh or, you know, even like a, a, a pond or even on the side of a lake and yeah, stuff. Yeah, a bigger lake with like a reed patch or something. You can pull that in there. My dad has a, a sneak boat that he used to hunt out of all the time. I mean, they just take a big, big push pole and right. push through the marsh and just lay it inside the reeds and just pop up, put a put a camo netting over top of them just pop up and yeah and with the kayaks and stuff um there are tons of uh different things you can do there's a group on facebook just about kayak duck mm-hmm. hunting so if you're going to be going the route of a kayak um i highly recommend joining that group and it's not just for people with kayaks uh kayaks canoes and even uh Any some, small vessels yeah some of the guys with the small like homemade sneak boxes mm-hmm. and stuff go in there if you're looking at maybe hey you know i want to try building a sneak box uh look around online there's tons of plans yep. for different sneak boxes online you know they're pretty expensive if you buy them made from someplace but um it's just simple lumber and stuff that you use to make them so you can go online look up you know sneak box plans and you can get those plans and then you can make your own sneak box and then it kind of adds to the fun of it because it's not just you know i bought this boat i'm gonna hunt and it's like i built this boat you know i built this hunt i built it all mm-hmm. so it's kind of a cool thing yeah. but um Depending on what type, like uh, what type of water you're hunting, there's a couple different types of motors you can go with. So obviously, there's your standard outboard, um, which is great for lakes. Bigger uh, bodies of yeah, water. Yeah, bigger bodies of water, lakes, deep rivers, um, bays. Yes, depends on where you're at in the bay. Um, it depends on the type of boat too. You don't want to take a john boat into a big bay. Get yeah, I mean, waves. you can in like uh, the shallower part of the bay, but mm-hmm. you don't want to be going like out in the bay with that. Yeah. But um, you also have your long tail motors, um, which are very popular, and a lot of times they can be really inexpensive to just build one. Mm-hmm. There are kits online that run like a couple hundred bucks, and then you can go and get um, the motor that they recommend with them, and they're only a couple hundred bucks too. And for your simple like 12 foot John boat or whatever or V bottom, um, it costs maybe about four or five hundred bucks to build the motor, and then you can run that motor in like four inches of water, which if you're hunting a small stream, a marsh, if you're in um, like some coves along the bay, yeah, if you're in a river that it could be a decent sized river, but if it has a lot of, you know, shallow rapids, shallows, and then it gets deep and it's shallow, and it's like, it would be beneficial for you to use a mud motor or a long tail. Go right ahead, and I would recommend doing that because, um, I mean, we're, we're going to be building one of those, and yep. we'll show you a whole video on that. Well, uh, the whole series on that with yeah, the boat. Yeah, whole series. We're doing a whole series on a boat build. Um, that's coming up soon. Um, but we're building that just because the, the main river we hunt, it can go from over your head to barely over your knees in a matter of, like, three feet. Yeah. It just changes. And it it's going to be real beneficial to us to use a long tail engine on that with the john boat just so we can go and cruise right through right that through. knee deep section you know even just a, a little below knee deep we can just go right through it we can keep on moving and we yep. don't have to worry about you know bottoming out the motor ruining your prop right. destroying your entire right. lower unit you know yeah. it, engines get like a gas powered engine can be very expensive especially like a full-size outboard motor even trolling motors today, yeah they even get trolling expensive. motors the the newer ones i mean they're they're gonna run you thousand bucks right um, they get crazy but yeah so you definitely don't want to i like i made the mistake of taking my outboard motor on a smaller river yeah. and i kind of banged up the prop a little bit you know it's fine props are only like 20 30 bucks but well it depends on, that that can get expensive too yeah it depends you know you know the joke about boats is bust out another thousand you know that's what boat stands for um you don't want to be busting out another thousand every time you go hunting yeah. so make sure you know your boat is geared up for what you need it to be geared up for if you're new to this and this is all new and we didn't elaborate enough on this you can shoot us a message and we can help you out with that and give mm-hmm. you some tips and pointers you know just for you tell us what you're hunting you know where you're hunting what you're looking for and we will be able to tell you pretty much exactly what you need to do and if you know you say well you know i kind of have a budget of this you know we'll do some research and we'll make sure that we can you know help you figure out what you what will work for you so but yeah stuff can get expensive you know it depends on one where you are like here where we're at it's not like we got a boat shop right down the road we can run down and get a new prop if we break one you know we're ordering it and it's gonna be here and 
a week days. or two weeks, yeah. or, you know, however long. But, um, yeah. So, other than like boat parts and stuff, you know, getting into like you can build boat blinds. Um, you can just it just overall you can haul a lot more stuff with the boat. Yeah. So you don't have to hunt. Like I said, you don't have to hunt from the boat. Um, you can you can put a blind on it. Um, they make scissor blinds. Uh, we're actually working on rolling mm-hmm. those out soon. Um, custom scissor blinds. Yep, custom boat blinds. But uh, you can get a you can get a boat blind and and just hunt right out of the boat and then you know you just roll up, toss your decoys out, flip the blind up and sit there, sit there and wait. Yep, and sit there and wait. Um, you could just use the boat for transport. Mm-hmm. Um, quite often we just use it for transport yep. and we just transport our gear to the spot and then we set up a blind. Um, park the boat. Yeah. 100 yards down like uh, most of the time we're hunting islands on a river so we'll drop the stuff off at the spot you know one of us will pull the boat around park it come up throw a camo netting over it come up yeah the island hunt from there yeah um, so yeah you don't have to use the boat to hunt from it can just be a transportation thing which is another thing you'll want to look at when mm-hmm. you're um when you're getting it is if it's just for transport do i need a, an 18 foot boat or can i roll with a 14 you know yeah. like that's That'll all matter. So, um, everything's based around your budget. You right. know, you gotta you right. gotta plan for guy okay, this much that I can and am willing to spend on boat, decoys, gun, etc. You know, and you kinda have to go from there. The most important things are gonna be gun, ammo, decoys, boat. Right. I would put boat last if you have the luxury of having a boat. Or if take you need it. Or if you, or need, if it. you need it. Right. Um, but if you don't need it, you know, that's when we could go into yeah, not having a boat and walking into spots. Yeah, um, let's, uh, let's which is talk about also that a, bit. a very popular way of hunting. Yeah, um, we also do quite a bit of that. Yeah, so if you like, there are some places where it's just like you know, uh, boating in is like it's just a thing. Like it's just big bodies of water. People are boating in and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's deep. You know, it's shallow. It's it changes a lot. Um, and then there are some places where it's just like you can't get a boat. You would be surprised how many little honey holes, okay, are where you can't get a boat and where other guys just don't feel like going because they don't feel like walking in. Yep. Um, this is, if, if if you're on a tight budget just looking to get into this and get started, you know, don't make don't make those guys that say, oh, you know, you got this, you know, all this money in this boat and these decoys and stuff, that make you feel like you have to pay to play scare you away, mm-hmm. okay? I've walked in with a dozen decoys on opening day and killed a limit and... 15 minutes because i knew where the ducks were yep. i knew where the birds were i knew where to go and the creek was not any wider than a driveway yep. that's how big it was i saw over 60 birds that day mm-hmm. over 60 birds and it was just like for the, how small the creek was and where we're at that's a lot of birds so if you're walking in you can venture to places that guys with boats can't go yep. you can go to those places and stuff you know find those little sloughs those mm-hmm. little streams creeks where it's just like birds are going there you know that's where you want to be that's where they're going that's because that's where the x is yeah i mean it could it could just be the birds are going there because it's so inaccessible to other humans right right they get left alone there or yeah. there could be a food source there that's just dynamite for them so yep. and the other thing about a food source is if you have like crop fields like if you live on a farm and near a farm and you know you know people who are farmers and they have flooded corn Flooded corn is probably one of the best places to duck and goose hunt. Right. Just because it gives them a food source and a water supply in the same spot. Yeah, flooded fields are flooded fields are a dynamite. Flooded rice fields. Can't take a boat out there. Yeah, flooded rice fields, flooded corn fields. You can't bean take, fields. Yeah, bean fields. You can't take a boat there. So yeah. um, those are all walk in or you know, if you have the luxury of having like an ATV or U T V or something, you could take that out yeah, there, drop your yeah. stuff off, run it home. Yeah, obviously too that'll vary kinda of using ATV or U T V will vary on if you have permission or if the wildlife agency where you're at allows mm-hmm. that. But um now I bet you some of you might be thinking, Well, I'm walking in, how am I supposed to carry everything in? Um and that's what we're gonna talk about next. There are some cool uh products on the market right now yep. that will um kinda aid in making that easier. So, um, first of all, there are decoy bags that have straps on them so that you can strap it on your back and carry it in. Um, you can get a sled. Mm-hmm. Um, they make the sleds that you drag behind. You just pile all your gear in there, throw your shotgun Those over are your very shoulder. Those yeah. are very, they come in handy, yeah, especially come if you're in. going through, like, 
shallow water, you know, because they, they float, they, they'll float. Yeah. Um, if, as long as you don't have like 400 pounds of gear on it, you know, they'll float. Um, and it's just, you pull it in one hand and just walk on, walk on through. Yeah. Um, and that makes it a lot easier than carrying, yeah, you know, you're going your decoy bag, yeah, all your throw ammo. It on there. Typically, He's, you know, you throw your gun and stuff, kind of try and keep that on up on your person and stuff, just because, the last thing you want is if, you know, your gun's in a sled. If it were to tip over or something were to go wrong, you don't want that to fall out. Get out to your spot and yeah. be like, I don't have my gun. Decoys, Someone's done that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Decoys will float, you know, if they go over, even, you know, if they're all tied up in a bag. But um, there's also backpacks that mm-hmm. your gun and everything straps right into. Yep. It can't go anywhere. It's a backpack. I think you can slide a couple decoys in well, there. Well, I was going to say, some of the backpacks, is if you have the rigs already rigged up, they have loops that you can just hook the the weights through and it'll keep them clipped on and just hang off the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can uh, use the gang lines in that situation. Mm-hmm. So there's a type, couple different types of rigging you can use um, just a... Uh, um, a decoy cord with a, a weight on the end that you just wrap up around the keel. Um, personally, I like to use gang lines. Um, yeah. A lot of times, one, I'm switching up what decoys I'm taking, you know, different mm-hmm. species. I'm going from teal and mallards and wood ducks, and then I'm throwing divers in, and I'm just I'm switching it all up. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm constantly mixing it up. And it's just so easy when they're all on gang lines to say, okay, I'm going to take three from this gang line, three from this gang line, and just mix and match them all together. But the other thing is, too, is... I don't have to worry about the weights coming unwrapped from the keels and going all over the place creating a mess. Um, if you are going to run uh, weights wrapped up around the keels um, and run them in a bag, I recommend getting the weights that are they're long like this, they're strap weights, and they fold around the keel. Yeah. It will make it so much easier because then they tend to stay there. Mm-hmm. Um, they fold around the, the bottom of the decoy yeah. that the line wraps around. So literally... It's a malleable metal, and it'll just clamp onto the side, and it won't right. move right. unless you pull it open. Right. So those make it a lot easier than, like, the free hanging. Some people use, like, fishing weights, like egg five weights. ounce yeah. egg weights, um, like sinker weights, and they'll they'll come undone because they're so heavy, and all that weight is deposited in one small area. They'll just and come unwrapped. Just get tangled up. Get tangled up, and then yeah. you get out to the spot, and you're trying to untie knots at 5.30 in the morning in the middle of a marsh or wherever you're hunting. It's not fun. Yeah. So, so. if you are a walking hunter, um, we talked about decoy bags, sleds, and we talked about the backpacks that you can get. Um, one thing um, that you're going to have to you know, be concerned about and stuff is concealment. You mm-hmm. need to be concealed. Now, we yep. talked about with the boats, you can run a boat blind or you could take like an A-frame with you or just use natural concealment. Um, if you're going into a spot, if you're by yourself, um, honestly, I would recommend trying to just make your own little concealment out of the natural vegetation. Um, it, one, it saves you on less, you don't have to haul as much mm-hmm. stuff into the spot. And two, saves you on money. Yeah, it saves you on money. You don't have to spend the money on a blind. Now, if it's like, you and one or two other buddies, you know, even if it's just you and one other buddy, um, this is your first year, you're getting into it, you're going to try some stuff out. Um, you can get an A-frame. They run, I think base ones start at like 380 or something, and then they go up to like yep. 600 bucks. Um, some of them might be more, but there's there's a bunch of different A-frames out there, and they are probably, they're pretty popular. Um, they used to be a big thing back in the day, and then it kind of phased out, and now and they're coming, coming back. Yeah. So you can use an A-frame. Um Real simple. It's you know, it's just it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a blind, it's kinda of shaped like letter A and you sit in the middle and you can brush it in and stuff and it just but it's one more thing to carry in. Um so I would recommend if it's just you or even if it's you, I can't tell you how many times I've been out sit with under a bush. Three or four buddies and we just all right, let's get the decoys out and then all of a sudden, you know, two people are putting decoys out and two people are working on getting stuff and we'll just move a bunch of logs and stuff together and it just looks like this big pile of brush there and that's our blind and we're sitting in there, you know, we got either a bucket, um, you can get a marsh stool. That's mm-hmm. another thing that's good for a walking hunter is a marsh stool. Yep. Um, and then you're good to go and nothing is better to conceal you than the natural vegetation yeah i was gonna say I, that that's probably the hands down easiest way to make it look as natural as possible right if you take a couple things here and there from that environment and put it together it's going to look like that environment right. you know you're not bringing in an a-frame that's got maybe some marsh grass where there's not marsh grass and then you try to throw stuff on top of it you know it just kind of can get jumbled so you take all the stuff from that 
localized spot, piece it together. I mean, it's it can just look real. There is so. an A-frame out there. Um, it is, I think, the least expensive A-frame. Uh, I can't mention the name just due to legal purposes, but it's one, it's brown, and two, I think it's around three fifty. Don't quote me on that. I think it's around three hundred fifty mm-hmm. bucks. Um, if I was going to get an eight, if I were you and I was going to get an A-frame, and you know, his first year, you're going to be trying a lot of different stuff, or if you do try a lot of different places to hunt mm-hmm. and stuff. That's probably what I'd recommend because it just gives you a nice solid backdrop for whatever you're – because you're going to brush in an A-frame, yeah. you know, whether it's marsh grass or it's brown. Um, but I'd probably recommend that just because you can brush it in with marsh grass. You can brush it in with brush. You can brush it in with – Literally you know, anything. Branches. I mean, you, could, you could go cut down some pine tree limbs and throw it on right. the top. Right. If that's like, what's I mean, there, it could be you're anything. hunting, you know – ducks in the pines <laughs> you know you can brush it just in with that anything. and it just kind of it kind of looks good so you know that is something you know you want to look into um but other than that you know there isn't there's there's some layout there's layout blind and stuff if you're going to be hunting a you know a flooded field mm-hmm. you can either run the a-frame or you can run a layout blind um layout blinds blinds get pretty pricey there's some yeah. lower end ones that are um inexpensive but with uh inexpensiveness comes not the best quality. Decrease in quality. And not even so much quality. It's just like luxury. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like it's all about the luxury. But when you're laying in a wet field, the last thing I want is to be soaked in a puddle. Of soaked in a water. puddle and just uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's where, like, the A-frame would really come in, in, in handy. And, it, honestly, if you're hunting a field um, and you can post up in, like, a hedgerow or something – just bring a bucket sit on a bucket make sure it's a dark color spray paint it brown and just kind of blend in some cover in front of you or something you can hammer some birds so um i don't think i'm gonna query you got anything else for concealment no just again make it look natural you yeah. know you don't want to be covering yourself with palm leaves if you're in the middle of a cornfield right, right? you got to use what's around you that's and probably the biggest thing. I, Using what's biggest around thing. you. Yeah. Use what's around you. And don't consumer. all take it from one spot and yeah. leave a bare patch. You know, kind of pick and piece from different areas. Like if you're hunting a cornfield, go take some corn stalks from a couple different areas so you don't just right. remove all of it from one area. And they're like, oh, there's they a big dark that. spot. That's, bird, a bird's eye view is a lot yesterday. better than what your view is. You may pull your brush together and be like, all right, this looks like dynamite. And the birds are flying over and like, look at that giant brown spot in that field around all that corn that pile of corn stalks and they're just like nah we're out of here we're not going there yeah like they know it's not real so Mm -hmm. um let's see talk about some decoys yeah all right um so the next thing is you know we talked about your your boats or if you're walking in and then we talked about the your concealment and your gear you know for walking in or boating um now now we're gonna talk about decoys which you know they are probably they're not the biggest asset but they're probably one of the biggest assets when it comes to waterfowl hunting um the key to picking out the right decoys is knowing what kind of birds you're hunting mm-hmm. um you don't want to be buying gab all decoys if you're just hunting teal or woodies you know you yep. don't want to be buying um you pin- don't want to have a full puddle duck spread if you're going to be solely hunting divers in right. the bay you know right. you got you have to do the research and understand what birds are in your area what birds are in your fly zone um and and how like how many different types of birds you know i mean you can my personal opinion is if you're gonna start out hunting and you're not solely going after divers buy a dozen mallards you know get you don't even really need a dozen depending on where half you're dozen right. to a dozen right so you know i typically until late late season when the birds are really flocked up i'm running a spread of less than 20 decoys mm-hmm. and you know um it works it works so um mallards are going to be your most versatile decoy there is you know if you're running mallards you will get mallards coming in um, you'll get black ducks coming in. You'll get uh, pintails, pintails widgeon, gadwall. Right, because they're all puddle ducks, so they mm-hmm. all socialize together. They're yep. all mixed together. Where it's like, if you have mallard decoys out there, and you're calling at um, canvas backs or redheads, they're gonna be like, yeah, right. Like that doesn't even make sense. They don't eat the same thing. They don't, right. You, you know, may see them. The same you may spots. see them like in like in a bay together or something. You know, because puddle ducks will literally use 
any body of water pretty much but the ocean you know to roost, yeah yeah to they'll go anywhere mm-hmm. um but yeah so it's just it's not going to work if you're trying to call in you know divers with mallard decoys but if you're hunting you know uh small streams sloughs rivers uh ponds you know farm ponds where lakes, there's a nice mix of different birds right lakes and streams and you want to just get um you know a simple spread to start the best thing is you just pick up a half dozen i would say a half dozen mallard decoys and then get um you can get a dozen if you want a half dozen to a dozen um and then get a half dozen of something else and that something else is going to be determined by you. Yeah. My half dozen of something else for the first season wood is wood ducks. Um, that is, we probably see more wood ducks in the early season than we do mallards. Yeah. But um, depending on where we are, depending on the year, depending on how the migration is going, it could change. You know, or we might just we might happen to run into some mallards that day. Um, but also there are quite a few mallards around here, so mm-hmm. it, it just it looks natural for mallards and wood ducks around here to kind of be. Uh, hanging out in the same spots right. socializing spot. um so realistically the best way to figure out what kind of decoys you need for your hunt is scouting now there is we're not going to get quite into scouting yet but there is a lot of resources you can use um like ducks unlimited delta waterfowl um uh bird the bird encyclopedias um mm-hmm. you know the internet and they'll tell you, like, oh, yeah, this kind of duck resides in this area and flies through here. And this and environment, environment's a big thing. If you don't hunt, right. like, swamps, you know. Right, like, um, you know, they'll tell you, like, where these birds are and where they travel and, you know, stuff. But, like, according to the Internet, I have pretty much – we have – Every kind of Every duck, duck species here, but we don't necessarily see all those. So it's you know there's it's a mix of information that you find online and information that you gather in person. Right, like the obviously you don't want to be is out, be the most important. You don't want to be out looking for cinnamon teal, which are a western, um, a west coast bird, in you know Pennsylvania, and you're just like oh I don't know why I can find it because they're not here. Yeah. But if you know you're out and about and it's like you're looking and you're putting that time in like okay i can hunt this area this year let me go see what kind of birds are here and do it before the season starts Mm -hmm. okay do it before the season starts um but you don't want to just go off of what you see online and be like okay well it says all these birds are in here so i want or i need these decoys go out and say okay these are the type of birds i should be looking for now let me go out and look for them and, and look and see what you find. You may find that it says you have mallards, pintails, gadwalls, green winged teal, blue winged teal, every puddle duck there is, but you're only seeing mallards and pintails or mallards and wood ducks. You know, you're only seeing those two species of ducks. And really, then you just need a dozen to a dozen and a half of those decoys, yep. and you're good. And you may find, like, there's been years where we're just running just a strictly mallard spread. Yep. We shot a Drake pintail, you know. They will come into that. You may find that sometimes, um, but it, it changes up. So, but I would say if you're starting out, you just need a dozen to a dozen and a half decoys. I'd get um, a half a dozen to a dozen mallards, and then a half a dozen of whatever else you, you are seeing. If you're seeing wood ducks, get wood ducks. Pintails, get pintails. Yep. So, so then maybe the next thing that you go into is firearms you know right you have you're to have, you have, to have a, a shotgun you can to go you can hunting. shoot them with a bow in pa you can shoot them with a bow i don't recommend it because it's probably more cost efficient to just go out and buy a, a new a gun that, that all the arrows you're going to be <laughs> yeah wasting. a new gun you can get a new gun with how much money you're going to be wasting in arrows and stuff um you don't need a new gun um you don't need the latest and greatest semi-automatic nope. shotgun if, I it, have if used, it has a firing pin and a barrel and it's a shotgun you're, you're good, good to go you're i've good. used the pump action shotgun for the past six i've been hunting seven years seven years seven seasons i've been using a pump action shotgun for seven seasons waterfowl hunting mm-hmm. and i still kill ducks you don't need uh this and that semi-auto you know nope. super magnum no it doesn't even have to carry three or three and a half inch shells you can kill them with two and three quarter inch shells if you if you get them in, in right. close enough and, you can you shoot know. them you know 20 gauges are becoming real popular for shooting ducks again so you know um when it gets into the gun you're going to need you really it's one it's got to be a shotgun it has to be a shotgun you can't go shooting an ar-15 at a bunch of no. ducks you no, can't do that. can't do that um it's got to be a shotgun um the other thing is is it has to be plugged for three shells 
um, you are only allowed one shell in the chamber, which is, you know, ready to fire, and then two in the magazine. You're not allowed any more shots in that. You get three shots. Yep. So it has to have a plug in it that does not allow any more than two rounds to be put into the magazine tube. Yep. Um, and then, you know, you can get uh, a 10 gauge, a 12 gauge, uh, 16, 20, 28, 410. Any of those will work for hunting ducks and geese. Um, the probably the most popular is obviously the 12 gauge. Um, and then the second behind that be the 20 gauge. Yep. Um, 16 gauges, they're they're a thing, but they're they're the, not as the ammo is hard to find. The so am, the ammo yeah, is a little the bit more expensive thing. because the ammo it's not as popular of a it caliber. It used to be popular. It yeah. Used to be real popular caliber, but it's not so popular anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, but if you have if you have it can be a double barrel shotgun, it can be a single shot. I hunt with a single shot sometimes. It's yep. fun. You can't miss. If I if, you, when, you I, when I can on. find when I can find the right loads and we're goose hunting, I'm taking a single barrel full choke ten gauge out there just because it's fun to shoot. Right, and you know it's like you gotta you gotta hit your shot. You only have one shot. So. Yeah, it it'll it, it might frustrate you at first, but it'll train you to shoot better. Yeah. Um, you know, I know for me, sometimes it's just fun because it's like, all right, you know, we're only allowed two of this type of duck. Well, I'm going to take the single shot, and it's got to count, mm -hmm. you know. You know you're picking out the Drake out of the drake Ken combo instead of just, you know, they're flying next right, to each you, other. You're trying to shoot at them. You know, you got to pick your shot Yeah, that's another wisely. thing. You never want to shoot at them. You want to make sure that you are – your shot placement yep. is correct. You don't, you don't want to be right on top of them. You want to be in front of them and below them a little. Okay, and with that, um, before well, before we get into that, let's finish talking about the guns. Yeah. But we'll get into to practicing. Um, so you can only use non-toxic shot, which is steel, uh, bismuth, and Tungsten. what's the other one? Tungsten. tungsten. Um, those are the only three shots you can use. Steel is the cheapest, and it works. Yeah. Bismuth and tungsten are expensive. Um, they work better, but it's really expensive they're you know. they're a closer consistency to lead lead's very malleable um, it has a higher knockdown power yeah. like it just it, it it hits them with more force it, it just knocks them down better but, but lead is a toxic chemical to waterways so it's been banned since what 1930 something 1940 something i don't remember i don't remember the exact head. year but it's been banned for a very long time maybe so anyways, some of your grandparents will remember using it back in the day but yeah. so anyways you need a non-toxic shot for hunting ducks and geese um so they have two and three quarter three inch three and a half inch shelves yep. um you got to check on your gun it's usually labeled on your gun barrel what the maximum shell length is um, so just make sure you're not getting a shell like mm -hmm. that's too long and make sure they're the right gauge for the gun. Yeah. Um, you'll hear a lot of guys talk about chokes and stuff. Um, chokes will chokes matter, but it's more like if you're going to really get into it, you'll look at getting a choke and stuff. You'll either probably get like a mid mid range or extended range choke, depending yep. on kinda, the type of area you're hunting. Right. Type of area you're hunting, how close those birds are working in your spread, you know. Um, but... Your basic choke that comes with your gun will work fine. Um, Most guns will come with a, an improved cylinder a or, a mo or a modified cylinder physically in the barrel already. Yeah. Most will come with a modified in the barrel yeah. already ready to shoot. So you could take that out, and throw your ducks. ammo you in, and you'll be, you'll be ready to go. I have um, killed ducks that way. Yep. Before I bought a choke tube, I was shooting, uh, I was shooting I a modified. It, I think I was shooting actually an improved cylinder. Yep. So it works. Um, There's a lot of science that goes into that. We'll get into that in a different video. Yeah, that'll video. be in a different video because we could spend, you know, we could spend a while talk, talking, yeah, about talking about the yeah. science of shot. Um, but, yeah, so you just need a shotgun. It can be a single shot, double barrel, side by side, over, under, mm -hmm. you know, pump action, semi-auto. If it's a shotgun and, you know, you can find non-toxic shock for it, it'll work. Yep. You can use it. Um, and then real quick, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about just, uh, shooting practice and then a little bit briefly on scouting and then we're going to wrap this up so yeah so shooting practice you're going to take a shotgun out one if you've never shot a shotgun before they kick you know your shoulders well, probably, gun kicks but it it has a different kick it's to got it. a different feel to it yeah um especially if you if the first gun you go shoot is a 12 gauge you know you're probably going to be pretty intimidated by guns now um, it won't be if, if you're taking it out and you're shooting out target shoot, loads yeah you're, you're probably gonna be shooting target loads one because they're cheap as long well get out to shoot and if you're going to be practicing for going out duck hunting and stuff you're probably going to go shoot ski mm -hmm. um target loads are a low branch load so you'll get used to shooting the gun and stuff before you got to really deal with that kick mm -hmm. and then by the time he gets around to dealing with the kick of a, a full 
a high brass, you know, steel shot shell. You know, if birds are working, you don't even notice it. Yeah. You know, when I go, I'll go to the gun range sometimes. I'll take my slug gun and I'll put twenty rounds through my slug gun. I'll wake up the next day, and my shoulder's black and blue, and it hurts, and it hurts, and I start, I start almost flinching before the actual gun goes off, just because yep. I'm anticipating it and stuff. When I'm shooting birds, I'm shooting. Sometimes I'm shooting three and a half inch shells. It doesn't even phase me. Yeah, I mean, I took, I took my my semi-auto ten gauge out and was shooting three and a half inch triple B shots, and I mean that's a big load. But I mean, you don't. In the moment, you know, you're more focused on hitting your shots, and you don't really realize the recoil. Right. So right. Um, so when you go out and practice, you're going to want to go out, and you're going to want to get some target loads, and you're going to want to shoot skeet. Um, well, let me – real quick. There's okay, two different ahead. types yeah. that you're going to have to do. One, before you shoot skeet, you're going to have to pattern your shotgun. You're going to need to know, with the choke that you have and the ammo that you have, how mm. it shoots. You don't have to. If you're just getting into it, you're kind of trying to dip your feet in. Or dabble, so to speak, mm-hmm. since we're talking about ducks. Yeah. You can laugh at it, Corey. It's all right. <laughs> um, in waterfowl, you can – you don't have to pattern your gun. Um, patterning your gun will help with your shot quality mm-hmm. a lot better. Um, I've never patterned a gun before. I kill ducks. Yep. I shoot limits every once in a while. Now if, you, if you get used to shooting your gun, then you'll be good. But, yeah. you know, if you really want to go into it and, like, make every shot count – it's out there. You can pattern your shotgun, put the choke in you want, the ammo in you want, shoot it at 20, 30 yards, and see what the spread looks like. And then that's what it'll look like up in the air shooting at a bird. Right. And or it, you it's... can practice with clays. And, I mean, if you hit the clay, you hit the clay. If you don't hit the clay, you missed. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, you know, there's guys out there that they want to take out every factor of the guns making the shot go wrong as possible. They want it to be patterned right. They want it to be dead on you know they want it to be all this and that mm-hmm. so that the only factor is them um it's not the archer it's the indian right but you know i i went out i was shooting clays um i love shooting clays it's a lot of fun um and really once you kind of get that down uh the only other thing that's really good for practice is dove hunting doves fly fast and they're small um so you can get out dove season usually starts before duck season um it's a good Up way to practice what september 1st yeah i'm pretty sure it's pretty much that all around it's usually mm-hmm. september 1st for doves don't quote me on that but the, check your state's guidelines yes but, but um up here it's usually september 1st they'll make just about as much of a fool of you as teal will yeah. um you know back uh when my dad was younger the national average was three doves per 25 shot shells that's um, not a very good average no, <laughs> no. it's not a very good that's, average that's that's uh ten dollars for um three birds three a doves snack. Yeah. yeah a snack a, a, a small snack because there's not a lot of meat on them but you can go out and shoot skeet and um don't worry about so much about leading so much that will come natural worry about um worry about your swing that's mm-hmm. probably the biggest thing making sure that when you shoot right so you know you're gonna have your skeet going this way and when you shoot right you're gonna shoot and then you want to follow through with it you don't want to okay okay boom and stop you want to keep then, following because then the the clay or the bird is then going to move in front of your shot pattern instead of because there's there's a time there's a little bit of time between when you decide to take that shot and, and when shot that shot actually spill. happens yeah. and it will make a big difference so practice your swing don't practice leading the bird so much that will come with instinct the other thing with that is if you have to make if you're using a semi or a pump if you have to make a follow-up shot and you stop then you have to really swing. But if you keep that swing going all the way through and you miss, you can. I mean, you're still tracking that bird, so you can continue your shot um, on a, if right. you have to have a follow-up shot. And then even with that, you can adjust your uh, shot right. distance to, to hit that second shot. Yeah. So to wrap this up, we're going to briefly talk about scouting. We kind of already did when we were talking about um, waterfowl identification, mm-hmm. but uh, – you know, you want to get out and kind of look around. Where can you hunt? Talk with other people. Um, see where they're hunting. You know, kind of see what they're seeing and stuff. Um, if they're not willing to share that with you, that's, you know, just ignore it. You know, some guys can be jerks. Mm-hmm. Um, but do your scouting. Find out, you know, and then pick that spot you want to go. But look and see where the birds yep. are going. See where they're taking off from in the morning. See where they're going at night. You know, look at all that and take the time to scout and find out where the birds are. It's all going to change as the year goes on and the migration fires up. Yep. It, you're going to, scouting is going to always need to be a thing. Um, 
it's got to be a constant. I mean, right. if there's one constant in hunting, it's got to be scouting. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you can go hunt the same spot, but if the birds aren't there, you know, you're right. not going to have any luck. So you got to you gotta follow the birds. I mean, there is a migration. They move certain times with different weather, and they all fly south. Yeah. You know, whether they start in PA and move down or they start up in Quebec and move down. You know, they're all flying south away from colder weather. Um, so you have to follow the birds, or you're not going to get birds. Yeah, so. that doesn't mean you don't have to go from Pennsylvania to Louisiana to hunt. No, you just got to figure out where they're going at mm-hmm. in your area. So yep. um, if you want to hear more on that, check back for our episode um, that's going to be solely um, dedicated just to scouting. Dedicated so, to scouting. Um, if you want to see more from us or you have anything you'd like to share, go ahead and shoot us an email or direct back direct message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, our Instagram is North T Outfitters. Um, Facebook, Northern Timber Outfitters, and our email is northtoutfitters at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Thank you.